What up, y'all? In this video, we are going to be talking about the only two ways that I know that a real estate agent could get business. If there's a third, please let me know in the comments because I only know about two. So without further ado, here we go. We get our business through prospecting or we get it through marketing. That's it. That's all we can do. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys the pros and cons of both and what you should be doing to build a kick ass real estate sales business. Ready? So let's define it. Prospecting is grunt work. It's pretty much you doing your cold calls. You're doing your door knocking. You're calling your sphere. You know what I'm saying? The stuff that you do not like to do because you are afraid of rejection, that's that. Marketing is spending some moolah creatively so people are contacting you. You know what I'm saying? Through your funnels, through your online ads, through your flyers, your billboards, your TV, your radio, whatever floats your boat. These are the two ways we generate business. One, like I said, is more sweat. The other one is more moolah. So let's talk about the pros and cons of all of it. And then at the end of this, I'm going to tell you exactly what you should do, which one you should pick. So you want to stay tuned for that. So let's talk about the pros of marketing. First of all, it helps you build a brand. And today, personal brand is everything okay it is absolutely everything and there's a way you can do your marketing that doesn't cost you moolah through your social media okay so marketing through social media is phenomenal because if you can really zone in and build your personal brand of someone that has authority in the marketplace people are going to be reaching out to you that is huge because this is if you're not creating content like right now i'm creating content you're not building a brand if you're not building a brand you're not marketing if you're not marketing people are not going to be reaching out to you see the beautiful thing about marketing which is my second point a second pro is you are making money while you sleep. You're getting leads while you sleep. You're getting leads while you're at the gym because your marketing dollar and your creativity is working for you. So your first pro is you're building a brand. Your second pro is you are making, you are advertising without cold calling, without door knocking. You are everywhere all the time. The key here is, although those are the pros, the key here is to make sure that you don't waste your money on marketing that is You know what I'm saying? You have to have your message right. You got to build a kick personal brand so people want to be around you. You got to have the right call to actions. You got to have the right hooks. People are going to want a solution to a problem, offer that solution, have a unique selling proposition in your marketing. Why should someone do business with you? Let them know in the first three seconds. And the biggest tip I can give you about marketing, make your marketing piece about them, not you. Too many realtors, when I see their marketing, when I'm driving around, I see their billboards, I see their for sale signs, it's mostly focused on them. Hey, I'm a top 1% realtor. No one cares because the next billboard I see, that person is also a top 1% realtor. Everybody's a top 1% realtor these days. You know what I'm saying? Top 1% in my brokerage. Well, dude, you only got three people in your brokerage. You better be top 1%. Whatever the case may be, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so um, so those are the pros of marketing. Let's talk about some cons. 
The biggest cons of marketing is it is very expensive. If you're going to do this mega marketing, it is very expensive. If you're mailing out flyers or getting billboards or getting bus shelters or uh, putting ads out in subway stations, with those uh, electric ads, all of that is expensive. If you're building out funnels and websites and all these doing some online ad, Google pay-per-click, or uh, Facebook marketplace, all of that stuff can add up. And the reason why a lot of real estate agents start their marketing campaign and then they quit is for point number two, be, the con number two is it takes time. It's expensive, con number one, con number two is that it takes time. So most people don't have the patience or the wherewithal to understand that if I'm putting my marketing dollars in January 1, I can't pull the plug on February 1. I can't pull the plug on March 1st. I got to wait 6 to 12 months. And I would go on the latter end of that. You got to wait about a year for that stuff to start taking off. So... It's front end loaded, meaning your money is going to be going away out of your bank account and not coming back in. And that's your first 12 months, man. That That's marketing. So if you're a realtor that you're looking to market and you only have a budget for two months and you think you're going to make that money back in two months, I strongly suggest that you go and you prospect. We're going to talk about that. So those are the pros and cons of marketing now let's get into the pros and cons of prospecting remember prospecting is the grind so the biggest pro is well it's free i would say that's the biggest pro it is the most profitable because their the return on roi is huge because it's mostly sweat equity if you're a new agent and you don't have money to put in your business, most successful agents, including me, started with prospecting. Prospecting takes skill. Okay? It takes skill, so you got to work on your skill. We're going to talk about that when I get to the cons. So, it's free. That's the biggest pro. The other pro is that it is now business. Okay, it's usually now business. You can get a lot of um, money right away because you can call for sale by owners. You can call expiries. You can go door knock, call your sphere. I don't know why agents don't call their sphere. Well, I do know it's because they don't want to be rejected by people that they love and care about. So they rather not call the people that can crush their feelings. The way around that is have a sick, unique selling proposition. Have a sick item of value to give them. And for me, it was providing people deals. Different story for a different day. If you watch this channel long enough, you will know my unique selling proposition for my sphere. And it is fire. I'm talking about you cashing checks, giving value high-fiving your loved ones, giving them dabs because all of you guys are winning. The beautiful part about this business is when you win, other people win when done correctly because you're building your people's net worth while getting commission checks. And when you get enough commission checks, you better make sure to also put it some of that into real estate. The other pro of prospecting is that it is now business that I already I already said, um, but now business to add to that it is predictable. Okay, it is predictable. So when you get really good at prospecting, you're gonna know exactly when you're gonna get business. Let me explain this to you. As you're making dials, let's say your prospecting is dials. You're making dials, you're making dials, you're making dials. You do those dials long enough, you need to track. 
because then you're going to get into, okay, when I make this many dials, somebody picks up. So every 10 dials I make, somebody picks up, for examples. So then if you're like, okay, if I want five people to pick up today, I got to make 50 dials. If I want 10 people to pick up today, I already know I got to make 100 dials. 100 dials, let's say 10 conversations, for example. You got to figure out your numbers. I'm just giving you guys examples, all right? So out of those 10 um conversations now you got to figure out your conversion rate to appointment because the whole point about the phone is get to that face-to-face -face appointment now you know the ratio of dials to conversations now you got to know the ratio of conversations to set appointments so then you're like okay out of the 10 people i talked to i got two set appointments so now you know in order for me to make two appointments i've got to make 100 dials you got it in here. So it becomes predictable. It also becomes repeatable. Now your business is predictable and repeatable and it's in your own two hands. You know exactly what you need to do every single day. It's free, but there's sweat equity in it. So now to prospecting, there is a whole bunch of cons, okay? The, one of the biggest ones is it's not scalable. You can't scale it up. So let's go back to that phone call, the cold calling example. Rick is cold calling. He's smashing. He knows his numbers. He's getting appointments. But guess what? Let's say I go and get four appointments and I will have four listings and those people also want to buy houses. So I'm working in the business now. I got to make that chatter. What happens to my prospecting? I don't care how disciplined you are. Sometimes you chase that check and it goes on pause. And when you're a one man show or a one woman show, it's hard. Because of course you're going to chase those four listings and those four buyers. Now you're so engulfed in that. Let's say you close five of those, right? Say out of those eight prospective deals, four listings, four buyers, you go and close five. You're hitting those commission checks. It's been good. But what happens is now you got to start your prospecting over because during that time you started working in your business and not on your business, you probably stopped prospecting. But let's say you're so disciplined that you still prospected while you did all of that work. So you don't want to start all over because you understand momentum and you don't want to lose momentum. Well, kudos to you. However, how is that scalable? There's only one of you calling. So you already know I can do maximum X amount of dials, X amount of appointments. There's only one of me. So now you can go and hire, delegate. You're prospecting. That's kind of another way. It's still prospecting, but now you're delegating and now that requires salary or an equity position of the person that you hired. Nobody wants to do that. There comes a time and place where you delegate, but maybe this is not the time and place because you're like, you don't know if you're going to do four or five more deals. You know what I'm saying? So it is not scalable where marketing is very scalable. It takes time, but it's scalable. The other con is it takes skill. You can go ahead, have a whole bunch of work ethic, make so many dials, knock on a whole bunch of doors, but you suck. You suck so much that you're not getting any listing signed. You can't get any buyers on contract. You absolutely suck. That happens. So if you want to be good at prospecting, you got to work your skills. There's an argument to be had that if you spend enough money and you're good at marketing, right, your skills don't have to be as good, but your skills should be as good. But I'm saying there's an argument to be had that if you throw enough money at something and your marketing is so good, you can have subpar skills and still close a few deals. You cannot do that in prospecting. 
unless you're closing your aunt's house and she thinks you owes, owes you a favor. But I'm talking about doing business with strangers. So it requires skill. It requires discipline. That's a con. To me, that's a pro because I had to go and get discipline and focus. Man, when you prospect, I strongly urge you to try it. Sales is full of rejections. That's another con. You constantly get rejected. People are constantly saying no to you. That doesn't feel so good. You got to have thick skin in sales. But in order to do it every single day, that requires discipline. That requires focus. That requires repetition. So you must be able to suffer through pain. We all know that people move away from pain and towards pleasure. There is nothing pleasurable about prospecting. And if you think it's going to be a walk in the park and you think you're going to have a good time, you're wrong. You're not. You're not going to have a good time. Like when you're suffering on the treadmill and you're running, you're not having a good time, man. There might, if you do it long enough, maybe you get that runner's high or whatever. But most people are not having a good time. They're doing it for the result. But it builds a skill. You build stamina. Because you're not having a good time, the most frequently thing what happens with the agents that I see, I've been in the business for two decades. I've been around realtors for the last freaking, you know, 20 years coaching them, being around them, the peers, being on, on their team or on my team in the same coaching, in the same events, open houses, seller feedback calls. I'm around realtors all the damn time. Most of them complain about burnout and they quit their prospecting. Most. The top one percenters, the people that are kicking ass and, you know, taking names and cashing checks. They don't quit. They understand that repetition is the mother of all skill. They understand that consistent, boring behavior is going to get them to where they want to go. So here's my suggestion, y'all. Here's what I suggest to you. You got to do both. You got to do both. All right. And I think you already know that if you've been in the business, I would start with prospecting. Even if you have a trust fund, still start with prospecting because prospecting is what is going to get you skill. Now, invest money into marketing with the deals that you close. Lead with revenue. You make some money. Take a percentage of that and put it back in your business. So you lead with revenue, you put it into your marketing. So it's not coming out of pocket. That is your ground game. Your prospecting is your ground game. You got to zone your skill. You got to do it all. You got to prospect. You got to talk to your sphere. You got to do the grunt work. And then you take some money from the commissions you make and you put it into marketing. And that's going to be your all around solution to become a millionaire agent. I promise you, because you're going to zone your skill. You're going to get the discipline. You're going to understand how to handle objections. You're going to be rocking presentations. You're going to be rocking scripts. So when your marketing goes out, two things are going to happen. A, you will have the time to let that marketing marinate. You know what I'm saying? Because it takes time for that marketing to start working. We talked about that earlier in this video. So you're not going to be panicking and trying to pull the plug. Because you're still prospecting. You're still making money. Also, you're putting money into marketing that you never had. So if you made a $10,000 commission check. Do your taxes. <laughs> Put some, save some for your taxes because a lot of, real, I should make a whole video on how real estate agents suck at paying taxes, suck at budget, budgeting for taxes. Yeah, a whole video on that I should do. If you like and subscribe, maybe I'll do that. Just let me know in the comments. But the point is this. 
take a portion of that for your taxes, take a portion of that to put back in your business, and the rest, do whatever you want. Pay your bills, pay your mortgage, get your car, you know? That's how you do it. Build a skill, and then you take that money and you put it into marketing. Now you have everything going. Listen, it is a race. It is a race to do this stuff quick. The quicker you do it, the quicker you're going to get results. Do this the right way. You know what prospecting is. You know what marketing is. Um, Both of that is in content creation and social media. We touched on that. Social media is prospecting and marketing combined to one, and it's free. So if you want more of this social media and you like what you heard, Make sure you subscribe. Give me a like. Give me some love, man, because I think I'm giving you guys some value. I want to get you from here to there. And you're not paying me a dollar. All you got to do is give me some love by hitting that button. You know what I'm saying? Look, man, if you're going through the grind, if you're feeling like you're in the gutter, I feel you. But remember this. You're just a couple tweaks away from going from lost to legendary. See you on the next one.